welcome to the botany session the topic is the stem a very important topic in external morphology of a plant as we all know that a plant comprises of two parts usually the underground buried part is called the shoot system and the aerial part is all this is called the shoot system this shoot system comprises of a main axis and what it is called the stem which bears all the parts of a, a plant that is the leaf the well flattened greenish photosynthetic structure then the part from where the leaf arises the reason where the leaf arises is called the node the gap between two successive nodes is called the internode then we have the axillary buds and terminal buds the flowers fruits all these are placed in certain regions specifically by this stem now our topic is this stem so stem it supports the plant body it uh, gives the mechanical support to the plant body shape to the plant body it helps in the transport of materials whatever the water absorbed by the root is conducted to the leaves through the xylem similarly the food material synthesized in the leaf is transported to the stem to the root through the uh, phloem through this uh, stem here it is once again i'm showing you the main axis the stem the leaves the buds the node the gap between the successive nodes is said to be called the internode and all that now here are the forms of the stem or otherwise called the types of the stem there are here mentioned three types the strong the weak and red juice what is this red juice in certain tubers the stem is very much red juiced and uh, is a case of radish in onion that is elium sepa the stem is very much red juiced we'll be seeing them in the course of time what are strong stem strong or woody stems their excrescence deliquescence cordex culm and scape then weak stems or again the trailers the climbers we'll be seeing all these things in detail that is the woody stems the herbaceous stems let us start with the woody stems here on the monitor you are seeing three types of plants that is the cordex the excrescent and the deliquescent we'll be seeing these three types of plants regularly in our gardens or somewhere on either side of the streets this is a coccus the main axis which is not at all branched and bearing a crown of leaves and what it is called the cordex we could see it in the case of uh, coccus nucifera borassus phoenix and uh, in gymnosperms the cycas the second one the main axis grows indefinitely lateral branches are arranged in acropetal fashion and the entire plant appears in a conical shape and what it is called excrescent uh, in gymnosperms the conifers like the pinus the cedrus the aracaria they are all uh, excrescents in nangiosperms you can say the eucalyptus polyaltia langifolia here is a umbrella shaped plant what it is called deliquescent we'll be seeing regularly in the case of mango ficus neem what not then one more two more that is cape and the culm what is culm culm is a, a characteristic feature of grasses the main axis is having joints jointed uh, uh, nodes uh, jointed internodes and what it is called culm in the case of bamboo sycamore maize etc this is onion the main axis uh, ends with uh, uh, an inflorescence and this axis is called the scape best examples for that onion musa even can also these are prostrates that is the trailing stems prostrates means which are always big these are again of two types the procumbent and the decumbent procumbent means which is always be creeping as in the case of tribulus or in the case of bacillus bacilla and here is the ma the major part of the plant body is uh, creeping all along the surface and terminal part shoots up and what it is called decumbent the best example for that is uh, a tridax procumbens then trendelar climbers here we are watching number of climbing plants and the axillary bud modifying trendel in the case of uh, pot, uh, that is a passiflora terminal bud modifying to trendel in the case of uh, whiteis the terminal leaflets modifying in the case of uh, pisum the petiole modifying to trendel in the case of uh, tropiolum 
and uh, the temple uh, part, of, part of the leaf temple modifying tendril in the case of gloriosa um, stipules modifying tendril in the case of smilax and inflorescence axis in the case of antigona and so on these are all tendril or climbers but uh, the long wiry sensitive structure help in climbing is called tendril and uh, we'll be seeing these uh, in the modifications in the course of time here is an interesting case this is a very woody stem climbing uh, over the support and what these are called lions or lioness in the case of entada netum bahinia in all these cases the woody climbers and this is a, a collicent or otherwise pseudo stem what the aerial part you are watching in the case of musa banana is not the stem it is formed because of sheathing leaf bases the original stem is a, an underground stem modification buried in the soil and this is a false stem called pseudo stem in the case of uh, musa dear students now we are moving into topic uh, sub topic in the stem but what is a bud bud is a condensed shoot help in the further growth of the plant body the bud is a condensed shoot help in further growth of the body may be vegetative or reproductive structure what the, here it is the axillary bud temel buds what actually bud comprises of what bud actually comprises of cabbage is this is a cabbage it is a biggest vegetative bud what it comprises of an axis enveloped by number of angles what they are called leaf primordia that is a bud the bud on its uh, 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 the position where it lies at the, at the apex of this term it is called terminal bud the axils of the leaves it is called axillary bud and uh, apart from that other than these two parts somewhere uh, sometimes the bud may present on the stem a uh, aged stem or on the root or on the leaf what they are called adventitious buds what they are called adventitious buds buds which which in course of time take rest uh, and uh, help in the vegetative growth also what they are called resting buds or the dormant buds also bud that gives uh, that help in the vegetative growth are called vegetative buds buds that uh, take part in the reproduction that is called in the form of turns into flowers what they are called reproductive buds as i said earlier adventitious buds other than the stem normal position here the buds developing on the leaf what they are called epiphyllous buds on the margins of the leaf in the case of bryophyllum what they are called epiphyllous buds or in the uh, terminal part of the leaf cilla or on the injured parts of the leaf begonia this is a colline buds buds developing on the aged branches or on thorns example that is a duranta buds developing on the root and what they are called radical buds help in the rep vegetative reproduction this is hypomia or else you can say one more example moraya millingtonia also this is the case of artocarpus the jackfruit where the buds developing on the aged branches help in the uh, they, they may turn into flower flower in the course of time into fruits so here once again buds usually one bud will be there in the axil of the leaf maybe sometimes more than two they are called the collateral buds or otherwise called cereal buds this is a collateral bud in the case of asa uh, these are cereal buds as in the case of aristolochia dear students now another topics of topic in stem is the branching we are seeing various types of branches fundamentally the branching is of two types lateral and dichotomous lateral means the main axis possessing the lateral branches the lateral branching is again of two types racemos and cymos what is racemos here you are seeing the main axis grows indefinitely and the lateral branches are arranged in an acropetal fashion that is the bigger ones are at the base and smaller ones are at the apex and what it is called acropetal with the result the plant acquires a conical appearance <clears throat> earlier we have seen that excurrence racemos or otherwise called monopodial branching the case of uh, excurrence that is uh, eucalyptus then polyalthea pinus etc then cymos the growth of the terminal bud is uh, distinct confined is limited the terminal bud may turn into a tendril or into a thorn or into a flower and further growth is taken up by the axillary buds present below the arrested terminal bud there may be one branch may develop it's called mo monocacial or uniparous two more than two like that according it has been classified here we go these three are of cymos type where the, when the growth of the terminal bud is arrested further growth only one branch is developing this is called monocacial or uniparous this is the dicacial when the terminal bud is arrested two branches are developing always this is called dicacial or false dichotomous of course this is racemos uniparous 
only one strong branch developing below the terminal below the terminal bud. These monocacial or uniparases of two types, scorpioid and helicoid. What is scorpioid? If the branches are developing in an alternating fashion, like jigjog fashion, it is a case of vitis and also in the case of cissus, it is called scorpioid. Helicoid means the branches are always developing only on one side and hence it is called helicoid, as in the case of Saraka and uh, Terminalia. Here you are watching, these first two diagrams are of a scorpioid type, the next two are of a, a helicoid type. Though it is in a zigzag fashion, ultimately it acquires a continuous structure and hence it is said to be called sympodial growth or sympodial branching. You are watching biparous. Biparous means, as I said earlier, when the terminal bud is arrested. In the case of Carissa, the terminal bud gets arrested with a pair of thorns. Two more branches are developing. As it is having opposite phyllotaxy, two branches will be developing, always be in that fashion. Hence, it sometimes it is otherwise called false dichotomous branching. This is polycacial. When the terminal bud is arrested, as in the case of Nerium, more than two branches, as it is having horal phyllotaxy, two branches are developing. This is called multicacial, multiparous or polycacial sign. The case of uh, Cotton Bomb Plandiana, and the case of uh, Nerium. So here we are seeing in brief the various types of branching. This is uh, racemose branching, this is helicoid branching, this is polycacial sign, this is uh, scorpioid, this is biparous. What is this one? Let's see, that is a dichotomous branching. It is not a characteristic, not a feature of angiosperms, but the case of cryptogams. The terminal bud is split into two and forming always into two branches, a V-shape. Hence it is called dichotomous branching, a characteristic feature of Lycopodium, Selaginella, in Bryophytes, Mercantia. My dear friends, once again, these plants are all like this because of the type of branching. It has no branches at all, it's codex. Branches in acropetal fashion, it is racemose. Branches in basipetalous manner or otherwise in uh, uh, cybose branching. This is a delicocent, excurrence and codex. This is about the uh, branching, what we, are, what we have discussed. And the stem modification this is another big topic. We'll be seeing it in next session. So for the time being, we today uh, in this session we have seen uh, the what a stem is, uh, what are the functions of the stem, what are the, what uh, what are birds, how many types of the birds are, and what is branching, and all that we have seen in the next session we'll be seeing the stem modification. And this is Durga Prasad, H.O.D. of Botany.